Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We're back with another episode of the Team Building Podcast, where you learn how to build a dominant real estate team in your market. And we have a phenomenal guest with us today. Clayton gets us here from Richmond, Virginia. And we are going to talk about how to build purpose and personal development into our real estate teams so that we give the individuals on our team a path to success. Um, now, a little bit about this particular episode. I'm recording this after the fact because our original Facebook Live broadcast initially had some trouble connecting up with Facebook. And so so we didn't actually get the first part of the interview where Clayton kind of went into his background. Uh, we didn't get that uh, on recording. So you'll hear us uh, transition into kind of the jumping to the middle of the interview. So I want to give you a little background on Clayton first. So Clayton's based out of Richmond, Virginia, has 16 staff plus himself, and he has actually moved out of production. So he's got 10 buyer's agents, two listing partners, three admin, and a courier. Uh, they did $67 million in volume last year. They're on track for $88 million this year. Uh, they did 265 sides last year. Uh, so we're going to talk about leadership training, personal development, how to kind of build purpose into your real estate team, um, how he stays productive, you know, so he can focus on his family time outside of work. And, uh, and really how to build a team that suits the lifestyle so that you can, you can pursue your purpose both through the business and outside of the business. So we've got a bunch of stuff to get into. So without further ado, here's Jeff Cohn and me with Clayton Gitz. And, you know, you mentioned a why, um, and it might have been, it might have been um, Keller Williams or one of my other, uh, or Gary or one of my other mentors along the way. Um, but I'll take the why a step further. I mean, I think that why has to be something that makes you emotional. My wife says, it's, you know, you've got to have a why that makes you cry. And, um, you know, because, because if it's not, if your why is not big enough, if your purpose is not big enough um, for you to go through the pain that you just went through to lose 100 pounds, then you're not going to get out of bed every day. You're not going to, you're not going to completely change your diet. Um, you're not going to pick up the phone and, and make the 30 or 40 dials that you need to make. I mean, it's just, it's got to be something. But, but the problem is most people don't tap into it like they should. And it, they have surface wise, but they don't have deep wise. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. Know, I've been, it, I, I, have you heard of David Goggins? He was I a Navy, Navy SEAL. He's been interviewed by tons of great podcasts that are out there. I, I just search David Goggins. Uh, Living with a Seal is one of the books that he that he well him and someone co-wrote. Uh, but one of the things that's really inspiring about his story is he talks about he was literally spraying for cockroaches at 24 years old, thinking this is not my life, this can't be my life. He was 300 pounds, African American, living in Brazil, Indiana, one of 10 black kids growing up in that town, and it was a pretty racist town. He's like, this can't be my life. I'm better than this. I'm different than this. I can do d different things, and he. He did, man. He, he got into the Navy SEALs program. He failed three times, but was able to finally get through it. And then he started running ultra marathons. He ran a race that was 205 miles. Um, he ran like he's run tons of hundred mile races. He has amazing stories. So check out David Goggins, you guys, if you haven't heard about him. But it just reminded me of that when you kind of yeah. talked about, you know, being willing to yeah, go through you. that pain. Thank you. Thank you. I have another book to read. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I just listened to five. There's a lot of great podcasts with him. Jocko Willink interviews him. Um, there's a yeah, I think he's the guy. Ones. I think he's the guy that moved in with uh, with that, with Jesse, the guy that had it. that owns that's like him. the Atlanta Hawks and all this. Yeah, so he's he's the subject of the book Living with the Seal. That's he was right. the Seal in that story, right? He's yeah, the seal. he's the one that makes him do like a hundred pull-ups at the beginning, and he can't do it, so he just keeps him making him do one at a time until and he finally he gets, hits the hundred. He gets to a thousand pull-ups in one day. Jesse Holy does. Crap. Doesn't yeah, go by up. the end, of, by the end of the story. Sorry, I gave it away. Love it. But dude, they're like breaking, they're breaking holes in lakes and jumping in like ice, ice lakes, oh, yeah. and just the craziest workouts ever. So sorry, we we, we divert <laughs> our attention. No, no, it's, it's all good. So 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 years ago, um, I got I got I read this I read this book uh, called The Miracle Morning, and I know that you guys are familiar with it. And a lot of a lot of your listeners are. Um, but we but I guess the difference is is you know for we, we did it. Like my wife and I did it. And it was that incremental, and the compound effect, you know, talks about that. It was that incremental, um, just day by day, the, the little 30-minute um, uh, portions of reading something, you know, that, that – let's, that, let's call Clayton out. He, um, Hal Elrod breaks them down into SAVERS, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E Do you remember what those SAVERS stand for? <laughs> uh, so, well, so I'll tell you – I don't know all of them, do. but I can help you yeah, through the so list. Yeah, so it's um, describing – which is journaling. Um, there is your spiritual time, whatever that means, whatever that means for, for you. For Meditation. Reading the Bible, yeah. yeah. Um, there is your uh, your family time. Um, there is your um, um, affirmations. What's that? Affirmations. 
your affirmations, reading, and, personal, and yeah, exercise. The personal, development, the personal development, yeah, the physical piece. Um, so, so what? So what we do? What we took from that is the first thing that we do is spiritual time. Uh, we get up at four forty-five every morning. Clock the alarm goes off. We get up, and we. My wife and I. I think it's important to have a buddy, an accountability bar, partner. My wife is mine. So, um, so spiritual time is first. Uh, then we do our, our physical time. Um, then we do our, we're, I'm bad about scribing. I'm just going to say it right now, but, but we do our, um, I'm sorry, Jeff, our um, spiritual time, our personal development time, our physical time, then our family time. So we, we've taken those four pieces, but we do it, we've done it consistently. And the, the magic that, that uh, let, me, let, me, let me change that word um, because it's not magic. The, uh, the, the gift that comes out of that is I watched my wife uh, come from a place of being lost. And, and even though she was a, a, was a busy mom, she didn't have a purpose. And the more she spent time working on herself over the period of six months to a year, she not only found a purpose, but she got on, she just, I mean, she has, she has elevated her game to a whole nother level to where she owns a, she's a busy homeschool mom. She takes care of the house of our children. She takes care of me. And she has a home-based business that is not one of the fastest growing businesses in this space in the country. It is the fastest. Her team is the fastest growing team in the entire country for this particular uh, product. And, um, and it's because she's spent so much time working on herself. So we took that and brought it into our business. So now we do, um, so our trainings, we do personal development training once a week um, to work on the foundation for our agents, awesome. um, which is the spiritual, the physical, the, you know, well, you, the relationship you, you, business. Clayton, you talked about Jim Rohn, and there's a quote I always share from stage that Jim Rohn is infamous of, and it's that your level of personal development will never, or sorry, your level of success will never exceed your level of personal development because personal yeah. development essentially defines the person that you become. And I've yeah. heard some people say that 10% of our gross revenue, um, sorry, our adjusted gross revenue should go towards personal development, conferences, books, podcasts, you know, essentially building ourselves in every area. And I don't know very many people that do that. So I can definitely attest that that would work for her. For everyone listening, Clayton, it's easy for you. You guys have a great relationship. What if your spouse just has no interest? What if your spouse doesn't want to get on board, doesn't want to level up, feels that they already kind of know their purpose? And the same yeah. for your personal relationships, your agents. How do we get them on board with, you know, doing the savers and reading the Miracle Morning and getting all jacked like you, like we have? Yeah, well, I, I think, well, first of all, you have to live it. And the, the more you the more you live it in front of your because my wife lives it in front of me now and it's motivating me like I'm trying to keep up with her. So mm -hmm. if your wife is not or your, or your husband or whatever your significant other is not doing that, then then you know, I just I just Jeff, I really I really I have um, gone through, uh, you know, a lot of the relationships that I used to have in my life are no longer in my life. Um, and it's because because I have a really big why I have a really big purpose and, and it, a really big impact goal. So I can't. You know, I, I just try to limit my exposure to negativity, and it's really difficult. We talked about this um, uh, pre-program as well. Uh, I don't, I don't, I watch what I, I watch what I listen to, what I read, what I eat. Um, you know, what what we feed our mind and our soul and our body. That's that's just that's what we put out there to the world. So I think it starts there. And Jeff, I don't, I don't. You know, the hardest part about this because you know, and Jim Rohn used to always say, um, uh, you know. Uh, actually, no, it was Gary Keller. Anyone can do this, but not everyone will. Then that again, Clayton, the, you broke up. I, I said, I said, Gary, Gary used to always say, anyone can do this, but not everyone will. Mm -hmm. Anyone can operate a business at a very high level. Anyone can do what you do, Jeff, but not right. everyone will. Right. And, and, and so, so I think as, as leaders, you know, you have, and it's that 80, 20 rule too. There's 20% of our leaders of our, of our folks, they're going to take it to the next level. And we can lead them to the water, but we, we can't force them to drink. So I think it's just, I think for me, um, it, it's, it's consistently living out um, what I believe and then giving people the bits and pieces that I've, that I've learned. Um, and hopefully they're going to pick up on some of that um, as, as we continue to lead. And, and, and so, I mean, that. I think that's I think it. So, guys, I, I, I'm going to repeat. Clayton, I'm going to repeat what you said because I think it's eye-opening, and I 100% agree with it, and I think a lot of people won't. So I always like pointing those types of things out and bringing up that conversation. That is that 20% of the people are going to run with something. The onus is on us as leaders to provide everyone the same opportunity, but please know only probably one out of five of the people are going to run with it, and it might even be less than that. And I'll speak to that because my team, we have almost 50 agents, 
any agent on my team can be a team leader where, where they can essentially build a team within our team, but we only have about 15% or 20% of the agents who have chosen to do that. And that's fine as long as they're always pushing to be better. And that's the only thing we can ask for. My kids always are so proud of their grades. They'll show me their grades. They all get straight A's. I never got straight A's. I got straight D's in school. So my kids are, are amazing. They're so smart. And I, I always say to them, I go, guys, I don't care about the grade. The grade doesn't even tell me how hard you're working because it might come easy for them. It didn't come easy for me and I worked my ass off. So I don't care about the grade. What I care about is that each and every day they strive to be better in every area of their life. And that's the same thing I want for my significant other. That's the same thing I want for myself. That's the same thing I want for my agents. And so we hold our agents accountable to different things to make sure that they're leveling up in every area of their life, not just within their business or within their job, which is servicing buyers and sellers. Um, a lot of this mindset came from the book, The Dream Manager. I don't know if you're familiar with that one. Uh, the dream manager essentially helps us to find the dreams of those within our organization and then help them realize those dreams, even if that means that individual has to leave our organization to be able to realize the dream. The first of the year, every year, everyone on our team goes in a circle and we all share our dream, our vision for the next one to five years. And then throughout the year, as people succeed within whatever their dream uh, items were on their vision board, they share that with the team. Every Monday morning, we have a team accountability meeting and people will say, hey, I just saw the ocean for the first time in my life, or I just swam in the ocean, or I just took my family to Disneyland, or whatever that dream item is. And that, to me, is the best motivator, because it's not just us, you guys talked about preaching earlier, and ministering, it's not just us saying, do this, and we promise something's gonna happen. Agents get to start to see, oh wow, they got to go to Disneyland. Like, they put in the time, They you, we watched each other sacrifice and make the prospecting calls and do the work that was necessary, and then they got to go to Disneyland, like they said they wanted to. I think I can do that. And that's the idea is to show them the, the path, show them others having success, but still only one in five will probably walk it and succeed at a high level. Yeah. 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 I think this cool. goes towards kind of bringing it back around to um, building purpose into our teams, which is, I think, one of the things that like as we as we grow and develop as leaders, more and more of our time gets put into hopefully growing and developing other leaders because that ends up being a much more highly leveraged use of our time. So Jeff, you mentioned kind of the one out of five and, and Veronica had a good question here about, you know, how do you motivate an unmotivated team? Uh, the answer is you, you can't necessarily do it. Hire right? new people that are motivated. Hire new people that are motivated. Yeah, you can't, you can't really, you can't teach that. You can't train that. Um, but I did want to bring, bring an example um, that you guys might get a kick out of, which is that, uh, so if you think of, um, if you think of Jesus as the ultimate leader, right? You think of the circles of people that he had around him. So he had he had the multitudes. He had 70, which were people that he handpicked and trained and sent out. Then within that, he had the 12 disciples. And then within the disciples, he had the three, right? So even Jesus himself wasn't a master at training everybody. Like Jesus himself couldn't motivate the unmotivated, right? So if we, if we have to accept that those circles are kind of pre-existing, they're built into human nature, not everyone is going to take action ever. And out of the people that are going to take action at some point, it doesn't mean they're going to take action when we want them to, right? Mm -hmm. There may be there may be some some other events that in their life that need to happen before they take action on what we think they need to do. And so uh, hopefully that will help people. I think that's one of the hardest things about leadership is to kind of come to grips with that because if you really have a heart for people, like it breaks your heart when they don't want what you see for them. It's it's devastating. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, it is. It's heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Jeff, I, I just want to comment on what, what you just said. Um, and it's one of the hardest things for me. I think it's my 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 eye personality. I'm, a, I'm an ID, but I really lead strong, strong with my eye um, is uh, is finding new people. You know, it, it's it's one of the things and it's like it's like beating your your head up against a wall um, because you want to help people so so desperately. Um, but but you also don't want to you don't want to uh, um, you don't want people to be mad at you or, or uh, as business owners, we have to make those tough decisions uh, to say, you know what, this this is just not based on where where my values are and, and where my vision is for this business. It's just not a, this, this is not a great fit for you. So but let me help right. you find, you know, another place that is. Um, but it's making those decisions quickly as a business owner that can lead to tremendous growth or, or tremendous pain. And the more you stay in that in that place of, of pain, the more you more you have pain. And I love this quote by Dale Carnegie. It says, "Inaction breeds doubt and fear. Action breeds confidence and courage. If you want to conquer fear, do not sit at home and think about it. Go out and get busy." Um, so I, I tell my team that all the time. 
you know, if you're sitting there thinking about making the phone call, the amazing thing for me is we create, we create conversations in our minds that haven't even taken place yet. Worst case you know, scenario. And yeah, yeah, and yeah, and they're and they're always negative. They're always bad conversations. So I'm, right. I just tell my team stop thinking about it and pick up the phone and just have a conversation. Right. Right. Yep. Nope. I think Love you're it. dead on. You know, birds of a feather flock together. And so for back to I think it was Veronica's question about how to motivate that team. Think about the average person. So look at all those people and rate them one to ten, being from ten being most motivated, one being the least motivated. Take the average of the group. That is the type of person you're attracting. So if your group average motivation is a three, your team is going to be attracting threes. And so you, you, I don't want to say go fire everyone because I think people can change. I know people can change if they choose to. But I would say that the people you try to attract, try to not allow them to see the accumulation of your team's motivation and have them focused on your motivation and your vision and what you want to help give to them if they choose to align with your organization. And you're going to have to continue to level up. And for any new team lead, obviously in the beginning, you might not attract the best talent. But over time, you need to be focused on better and better talent. Um, Gary would always say in Recruit Select, I think it was hire slow, fire fast. If you know someone's a bad fit, a bad culture fit, and they're tearing down that motivational piece, they're the naysayers, they're the complainers, get, kick them out of your organization. You don't have time for people like that in your world. Um, only have the people that are going to be uplifting and help motivate each other to be successful. Yeah, right. and, and, and Jeff, I think also make sure that the problem is not you. You know, I, I think, I think, you know, I've had, I've Good had line. to look in the mirror, you know, in, in the past yeah. and say, you know, am yeah. I, am I leading, am I leading the way that I, that I need to be leading? Am I, you know, uh, it's, it, Jim, Jim used to always uh, also say, learn to work harder on yourself than you do anything else. And, it, and if we are constantly, and I love what you said about uh, just that, that phrase of leveling up, if we're not constantly leveling up uh, and, and then, then we're not going to attract people that can help us. Uh, you know, take our visions to the next level uh, and help us impact more people's lives. If if we're not willing to change and grow, then then we're not well, we're not going to grow in our organization. Our people will grow past us and leave us. When brokers Absolutely. are like, why did that person leave? Well, they left because Absolutely. your brokerage became obsolete because they Absolutely. surpassed your growth. Yep, I 100% agree with that as well. So cool, awesome. Uh, All right, guys. I wanted well, to bring uh, up upcoming yeah, workshops. Ahead. We've got a workshop this Monday. I know this is late yeah. notice. If anyone can spin it. <laughs> June 11th, uh, right around the corner, we can get you 50% off. Use half off J-U-N when you sign up for the workshop. Then the next one, I'm going to be in South Africa for a month. Uh, Matt, I am going to try to work with you on possibly doing some podcasts from South Africa if my internet connection is fast enough. Otherwise, you guys will be pleased to um, know that Andy Cuny will be my sit-in for those episodes. And then August 13th will be our next team building workshop. So if you guys haven't come out, um, we're going to give a 50% off discount for August as well. So that's just half off AUG to be able to take advantage of that. Go out to EliteRealEstateSystems.com to be able to, to take care of that. And then, of course, iTunes, just to give Clayton a quick shout out. Go out to iTunes, give the, um, the Team Building Podcast with Jeff Kona a five-star rating, and give a couple sentence shout out to Clayton Gitz and all of the great information he had to share with us on, a leader, on the leadership standpoint. Right. And then, Clayton, what's the best way to reach out to you and connect with you if, they, if people have referrals uh, in your area? Yeah, I mean, they can email me for sure. It's at Clayton at MissionRealty.com. That's uh, Clayton at MissionRealty.com. Perfect. And then we'll refresh people's memory, the area that you serve. Where would you like to receive referrals, ideally? Yeah, so Richmond, Virginia, and the, and the surrounding areas. Okay, perfect. Awesome, guys. Well, this has been a lot of fun. And uh, guys, just make sure you go to EliteRealEstateSystems.com. You can follow the podcast there. You can uh, learn all about the workshop. We didn't really touch on the live stream program. You can learn more about that there. Everything is on the website. So thanks so much, guys. We appreciate you uh, liking and commenting and kind of interacting here on Facebook Live. We are live here on Facebook the same time every Wednesday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, 11 Central. So make sure to join us then. We'll see you guys next week.